Welcome to Chasing Currents. In this video, we give you a boat tour of our tiny home. We plan to live on Talisman for at least the next two years as we sail from the UK to the Mediterranean. You will have to excuse the weather, it's very windy today. So we'll try and speak up and hope that you can hear us okay. So this is Talisman. Talisman is a 28 foot Sultan Stag that was built uh, by Emsworth Boatyard. Uh, there was 50 something of them made and the majority of them was a lifting keel. The one we have here is actually a fixed keel and we're really happy with that. So she's 28 foot long, she's got a 3 meter beam and she has a draft of 1.5 meters. So let's go and we'll start at the bow actually, let's have a look at the bow. So we've got, uh, I think it's 140% Genoa or it's 100 it's between 130 and 140% Genoa and we have a Platismo uh, roller furling system. We noticed that as we've been sailing with it, it does jam sometimes so I don't know whether that's our technique and we need to get better uh, but we've changed the line on it anyway and hopefully the next time we go out it's going to be a little bit easier. Um, at the front so we've got lots of cleats um, and lots of places that we can tie off to so when we're anchoring we can actually, uh, we have a nice snubber set up um, that we can use and we have an anchor locker here and then in that anchor locker we have 50 meters of chain and we have a rockner anchor yep. so this is the anchor locker um, and like Bryn said we have 50 meters of chain in here and this is our lovely um, brand new but already quite well used rockner anchor moving back from the uh, from the bow of the boat we have the hatch which leads into the v-berth and all the hatches on this boat, this one behind me as well, these are original. So I don't know whether you can see on this bit here. So I've painted the top, but I've left the bottom. I haven't painted that bottom bit yet. And you can see the fiberglass that's coming through. They're original and it was itchy. So I've still got to finish this job, but now painted the top, it's nice and comfortable to sit on again. Beyond this forward hatch, we have a Seago Ranger. 270 which is a 2.7 meter dinghy unfortunately because of the size of the boat we don't have many places to put a, ding a dinghy so this is our solution and it's working okay for us so far so we're actually redoing this shot and i'll show you a clip of how windy it is on the day that we're deciding to shoot i have never seen Kate do this before but anyway <laughs> Let's get into what we're going to talk about next, which actually is our mast, sail, stack pack, lazy jacks, and the setup that we have. So if you see here, everything we have comes down to the mast. We don't have anything running aft, um, although that would make it a bit simpler for single-handed sailing. Um, the boat never came with it, so we're not going to change that. Although we have been advised to, we're still thinking we're not going to do it because we are being a bit budget conscious and there's other things that we think are more important to spend our money on at the minute. One of those things that we thought was important to spend our money on was a stack pack and lazy jack system. And the reason for this was the first time we got caught out in anything that was mildly terrifying for two new sailors, uh, we had to drop the main, which obviously we didn't do early enough and uh, Jade was up here and she was um, but trying to get the main down in a bit of a sea and with no uh, lazy jacks to keep everything in line it was a real big struggle and we've since been in not quite the same conditions but we've been tested and we've had the lazy jacks to compare it to massive massive improvement we're super happy that we got lazy jacks and the stack pack just makes it super simple to basically tidy everything away. We had a, we had a, a mainsail cover, but it's not as nice or as easy as this. Uh, the sail that we have, we have a mainsail with a two slab reefs. Um, the sail, I think, is about 12 years old or maybe 10 years old. But in the coming weeks, we're going to be taking all of our sails to um, a person. The last person actually that uh, rigged this boat and uh, he's going to check them out for us and we're going to see what we need to do if we need to change anything. And that's pretty much the mast and boom and sail laser jack setup. Let's move into the cockpit. So firstly, I'm just going to mention these awesome cushions which Bryn actually made. He's super crafty and he'd never sewed anything before. So yeah, this adds a really nice level of comfort and it also matches the um, stack pack. So, so obviously, it's super spacious, I think, for a 28 foot boat, and you know, you can see that it's quite a decent body length, which is really nice. It's a tiller, um, we've got the 
the this is where we can hook up to shore power here which we don't actually usually do because we have got solar which Brian stores himself as well um, but we hooked up at the minute just because I've had to charge my laptop up and we haven't installed our solar inverter yet uh, so yeah that's why we're hooked to shore power we've got two self tailing winches and two smaller winches um, so we're quite happy with that this, uh, our bilge pump our manual bilge pump here as well and we keep the this in here with that uh, this is also obviously our gas so we can turn this off and on okay so i'm just going to quickly show you inside these lockers and i'm just going to talk a little bit more about um, the solar as well so firstly let's have a look in the lockers these lockers are absolutely massive um i'll cut to a clip of uh, me being in there and jade being in there actually jade um actually installed most of the uh, diesel heater install um at the time i just had an operation and jade was the one that was doing all the work but this is our fuel tank for the diesel heater uh, just on the side we have our spear well my spear guns jay don't like spear fishing <laughs> um, and then further at the back we have a, a, a spare anchor and a lot more anchor road underneath as well but it is still good uh, a real good empty big space that goes all the way under the back aft of the boat um, and I, that's where I had to get into. I'm glad your toe weren't in there. Oh, you yeah. Lost it. I know, yeah. And that's actually yeah. where I had to get into to do some of the uh, solar panel installs. So the solar panels we have are Renology uh, 100 watt each, um, and they're running in parallel. So I have the wires going down through the back of the boat, um, and then into the quarter berth to the back of the electrical panel. Let's show you actually under. This locker, which is a lot more messy. So we have a fire extinguisher, we have call boxes, we have our fuel tanks in here, um, and we also have a handy little uh, table that we can put in this little rod holder. We also put fenders in here sometimes, spare ropes, but generally both of these lockers, they need a good tidy up, a paint and a clean, and then I'll be happy and it'll be a lot more usable. But at the minute, they're just su such a big space, you can put whatever you want in there. So, as you probably noticed, we have this outboard on the back of, uh, on the back of our boat. Uh, we, actually, we got a new outboard because we had some problems with the one that we had before. And because we're quite new to all this, it didn't take many problems before we lost our confidence. And I was like, no, let's just get a new one because I'll trust it more. And I know that's really bad to do, especially when you're budget conscious as well. But for the savior of our confidence, uh, that's what we did. Just quickly moving on to some of the electronics. At the minute for the electronics, we have a clipper depth and a Echo Pilot bronze lug repeater. So we are going to change this. We actually have um, a new BNG pack that we want to install, but I'm going to keep this depth, but I'm probably going to move it to the other side. So we're going to have two depths uh, running separately so that we have one as a redundancy. But this is where we're going to have the, we've got a Vulcan 9 to go in. So over the next few months, you're probably going to see some videos of us doing the work where we install all of these things. And this is where our ship's compass is. Um, I, I think this little like canopy, it's really nice. It's a nice space, it's comfortable, it's light. Um, so let's go in the boat and show you the next section. So obviously you come down the steps. So we have the nav station to the left and we have the head to the right. Um, so we'll go through and show you. Bye. So as you can see, uh, it's pretty good headroom. I'm 5'8", and there's quite a big gap. So, just a generic Jabsco manual pump sea toilet. Um, we don't have a holding tank, so this is essentially all there is. There is a drain in here. Um, so if we wanted, we could change this to a wet room or add a shower, uh, but we've got no immediate plans of doing that. We're quite happy the way it is. There's a few little nooks few little shelves there um, under here there's three sea cocks and we've got sliding shelves back here but to be honest we don't really have a lot of toiletries so it's mainly just cleaning stuff toothpaste there's a little um, another cupboard behind here as well but um, it's kind of loose and we haven't really fixed that yet 
Yeah. So we're going to take a look at the nav station next, which is directly opposite. Now this is the nav desk. This is the navigation table. And here we have a quarter berth as well. And this is our electrics panel. So if you come down the companionway here, this is basically my little domain. The cool things that I like about it is one, you actually have a, a seat. So there's somewhere to sit properly and it's quite comfy and it's quite open, especially for a 28 foot boat. So the most important things for me on my nav desk are I have a chart plotter, which is soon to be upgraded. I have the VHF radio, which we're keeping for now. Uh, we have a radio, which we, there was an old Sony radio here, but we got rid of that because we don't use CDs. And then there's some more electronics behind this, like the VHF splitter, um, a multiplexer, and a couple of other things like AIS as well. Um, we have our Mayday Mayday little cheat sheet here, which we should know anyway, but it's nice to have a cheat sheet because when you're in a panic situation, the chances of remembering everything you're meant to say are pretty slim. And then we have a handheld VHF, uh, which we use when we go on the dinghy, go to a beach, uh, we just like having an extra VHF, it's a backup as well. So on the nav desk, as you can see, I can fit full size charts. Now the thing that we use our quarter berth for mainly is storage. So at the minute we have our GoSun, which is our solar cooker. Uh, we have the box for it a little bit further back and we have some cushions. And also when we bring the cockpit cushions in, we also slide them in here because you know there's only two of us and we don't really need the quarter berth that often. At the back of the quarter berth, uh, you won't be able to see it, but up that side, um, that's where the fuel tank is and where the fuel line is. So if you want to see where the diesel comes in, that's where that is. Under here, there is storage all the way back um, and it's really good storage. At the minute, the first one and the second one are used for the batteries. So we have house batteries in this one and we have the starter battery in this one. Uh, behind this little panel, uh, we've got the electronics, which there's a nice open area, which is really cool. So when I'm looking to install our, our new navigation gear, it'll be nice and easy with a nice open area to work in. This is our current, um, this is the back of our instrument panel that you see in the cockpit. So I'm going to build a new one that will house the Vulcan 9 to go there. But on the back side of this, this is where our solar controller is as well. So the solar controller is here, comes down, goes into the batteries and I'll quickly show you now what the battery compartments look like. So this is the starter battery. So it's in its own little box here. Starter battery. And here we have a Sterling char battery charger. Um, and that's how we charge from shore power. Now it is a little bit of a mess in there. Also this side here, this is a Victron battery monitor. This is our shore power on and off, and this is our 240 volt plug system when we're plugged into shore power. So that's this one. And then. And then. And then. That's about it. And then. Uh, this is just our two house batteries that we're using at the minute, but I have got two more on the boat that we're going to upgrade because I'm not exactly happy. I know the electrics are run here, so we will be upgrading that. And then, and then, there is another uh, bit of storage further back, which we currently don't use at all. And that is the nav area, quarter berth, battery system, everything wrapped into one. Again, the last thing that I almost forgot about the nav station is this is where we keep our life raft. Uh, so we got this when we first got the boat and it's a four man life raft, but I, we don't know where else to put it. But Keeping it here, it's quite handy, it's next to the stairs. If we need to run out, we can just grab it and go. That's the uh, theory and the plan with that. So we're going to show you our galley now. We looked at like all different 28 foot boats and this by far had the largest galley. Like there's all this, you know, surface space, um, loads of storage. This is a big selling point for me and it helps that, you know, you can stand up as well the whole way and yeah, it's brilliant. So we've got a gimbaled Nelson uh, stove. It's got a, an oven, a grill, um, and two burners as well. It's in really good condition. We were lucky that it's quite new um, and obviously came with a boat. Uh, quite a bit of storage behind here. There's a little shelf and just really deep 
full of cupboards that you can put stuff in and this top one as well goes quite far back it's not really organized very well at the minute we're still in the process of sort of organizing we've been in a marina for you know quite a few months so everything's kind of thrown about nothing's really stowed away properly but when we go out sailing we kind of reorganize it all we've got all of these sliding cupboards so you can see in there they're quite go back about you know half an arm's length and then yeah so this is all one well two kind of long shelves so you can fit quite a lot in there really and then we also have an extra one here which again is two shelves and we put our um kind of non-perishables in here so like you know lentils and rice and dried noodles and then just herbs and spices brownie mix uh, and then so yeah this is this surface this work surface here this was just kind of plain white when we got the boat so we just got this um, adhesive and it only costs i think like six quid uh, and then just lay it on and i think it actually looks really effective um, obviously we don't know how long it's going to last but so far you know we've had like hot water on it hot dishes and it's been fine so quite happy with that happy take looks this is the sink there's some washing up in there at the minute sorry about that <laughs> um, and it's a obviously manual pump tap it does leak quite a lot from here when you use it so we are replacing this we've got a, a pressured electric tap this is a cooler we're not totally happy with this um, it is really low power consumption it's just a cooler it's not a fridge but it's not really good at keeping things cold when it's really hot so we don't, we don't really use it for you know things that need to be kept at fridge temperature we only use it for you know just to keep things fresher a little bit longer or keep our beers a little bit colder ideally but yeah we're unsure what we're going to do for the fridge situation at the minute cause it's quite expensive to obviously fit a, an actual fridge um so we might go with no refrigeration and just try and you know go old school preserve food dry food and um, just try some different things see what works we've got um two drawers here so this one we kind of just use for odds and ends bits and bobs um our cutlery and then this bottom one we use for pan pots and pans um it is quite a big space uh so it's good to put bulky things in out the way and there is this here but we don't we haven't actually cleaned this out yet and we don't use it it's kind of filthy um the old owner used that for pans um so we're not sure yet what we'll use it for but yeah it's good to have some extra space and then this is where the bin is there's a bin there and another sea cook uh, and we have this net as well for obviously our um, fresher fruit and veg just so they don't get knocked when we're out sailing not looking very healthy at the minute but you know we do sometimes have fruit and vegetables yep so that's it for the galley um we'll show you the kind of living area. So the first thing we've got is it's a nice U shape and we have a table that goes down. <laughs> so this will go all the way down. Do, 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 do. Slide out. And then we have another double berth. And then we use these cushions and then these just go on top. And then yeah, nice comfy berth. I'd say it's super comfy for one person. Uh, a little bit of a tight squeeze for two. But I love how the stag owner's brochure advertised that this is a five berth. But I actually think it would be a little bit cosy for a five berth. So then behind all of these, so we got these cushions were, they're the original cushions that we got when we brought it, but then uh, we got them recovered. Uh, not, we, we asked my sister to recover them, so. Thank you, Zoe. So behind the cushions, we then have this storage. Interesting story. You'll see all this gray paint. Uh, we had a primer that was in here and it, uh, it spilt and exploded while we were sailing. But yeah, this is just like a bit of a DIY storage. Keep some cleaners in here. I think once the boat is like more finished and we're, we're more prepared to sail, um, we're going to take some of this stuff off the boat because I don't think you need it. Um, but that storage is really good. It goes the whole way across. Underneath this one, let's see if we can just have a quick look. That's uh, mainly uh, diving, free diving, snorkeling equipment in that one. But again, that's quite a deep locker. 
And then under this one is pretty much all just tools. So we have electrical tools in this locker. Um, and they're relatively easy to get to. And then this is more, oh, so there's the electric tap that we've got to install. I suppose it's more like a projects and hand tools. So, but equally useful. And it's quite nice that you get such big storage on this boat. So yeah, this is the saloon. It's nice and easy to sit. You can, obviously this table goes up. And then you've got these deep lockers this side as well. Um, you've got, I think it's meant to be for like wine storage, uh, but we use it for... <laughs> Alcohol. Uh, yeah, all sorts of alcohol. We have a first aid kit there. In fact, we have two first aid kits. This is where we keep our little handheld vacuum and just bits and bobs. This is not as safe when you're in a seaway. We may have had a drink before we started this video. And yeah, this is just like knickknacks, so a little bit of varnish. Um, but yeah, generally this is put away, tidied up. Uh, for when we're actually sailing and then this one has more safety stuff in there in here as well and we also have our flares our fog horn bungee cord and these should be next to your seacocks but we keep all of our safety equipment here together and it's in the saloon really quick to get so lastly this is the last locker and we actually don't well we didn't have much in here until yesterday, I believe. There we go, so this is what we have in at the moment. So I have two batteries here. These are 190 amp hours each. And then the rest of this stuff is the B&G equipment, which we're gonna install over the next two months. Uh, just forward to that, we have a, a water filter. In fact, when, I think it was about three months ago now, we actually changed all the plumbing on the boat. We changed all the lines, because they were a little bit old. And they were given a little bit of a, a weird taste so we changed all that and yeah so again another big big locker once we've installed all these things and we've done all the jobs that we want to do i'm just picturing all the space we're going to gain when all these boxes are gone so we'll show you the v-berth next obviously it has a door which is here uh, and yeah it's actually a super spacious v -berth. really comfortable but I'll show you the uh, storage bits first. So we've got one wardrobe here. Um, there's not really much order. It's a bit of a mess at the minute. Um, we've got a chessboard and our life jackets in there. But when we go out, obviously we have the life jackets. So this is the deck fitting for where uh, the water comes in when we fill up with water. We've got a small little cupboard down here, um, which doesn't have a lot in, but it's space still which we could use at some point and we've got this as well we don't really have many clothes on here because um we've only really been coming down weekends for a while so um we don't have a lot uh, but when we move on here permanently again we can obviously bring all our clothes here so we've actually still got the original boat cushions that came with the boat to sleep on in the v-bus so we've added a two inch mattress topper and it's made the world a difference really um it was a bit of a bodge job sticking it on, but we glued it onto the cushions. <laughs> but we'll show you that um, in a different video or um, in a video clip. We've got a carbon monoxide alarm as well, just under here. Um, and that's a really good one because better safe than sorry. Better safe than sorry. Uh, you can also see there's quite a lot of shelves, um, which are really useful. So you can like put your phone um, and snacks. <laughs> Um, and like, you know, clothes and stuff as well on these shelves, um, just here, which is pretty good. And also we love this hatch. Like I really love looking out um, at night and seeing the stars and seeing what the weather's doing in the morning, whether it's raining or sunny and yeah, it's really nice. And this is when we're being lazy and we want to just wa watch a movie. So this is our own personal little TV screen. That's what we watch things on, on our tablet. And I'll show you underneath the um, V-Birth mattress now as well because we have got a lot of um, locker storage under here as well so obviously underneath the mattress we have these super long lockers um, we haven't really utilized them yet but there is uh, we've got like spare sails in there and then this one has got our water tank which is 100 liters and it's a flexible water tank okay so once you're in the boat the 
thing that's going to be underneath where you're walking and where you're stepping in. So we have a fire extinguisher and then we have this door. And then if I pull this out. <laughs> so this is our engine. This is a Beta Marine 16. Um, it's actually not an old engine. Uh, so I believe this is about, I think, eight to ten years old, somewhere around there. Um, so when we was looking for the, looking for a boat, one of the most important things was I wanted an engine that wasn't too old. I didn't want to get an old boat with an original engine just in case I got any problems. So yeah, this is the engine compartment. The one tip that I would have for an engine compartment is try and keep it as clean as possible. This isn't the best example at the minute, um, but I do use like these like little uh, moisture absorbing sheets at the bottom. And my tip is, when you're running your engine, this will help you spot. If it's clean underneath and you have one of these sheets, you'll spot any diesel leaks or any leaks at all, because you'll see them on this mat. That'll give you a good indication when you're doing your checks um, before you set off, whether your engine's healthy at that time. And yeah, but it's a really good engine, nice and easy to see where everything is. So easy for maintenance as well. So just before we finish, there's another thing I want to actually mention, and that is the floor. So we've put down this foamy, soft flooring. Now, it's not exactly the best flooring, but it is insulating, it's soft on the feet, it's easy to clean, it's cheap, it's, it's a lot of good things. Um, now, it's not the perfect solution, but it's a good solution for us. Underneath this, we have a, we have, um, a wooden floor, and then you can lift up the wooden floor and you can get into the bilge really really easy access um, this boat has keel bolts which i'll put a few pictures of the work we had to do in the bilge so you can see what it looks like and what it did look like but yeah that's just one thing that i wanted to mention that was a nice cheap easy quick fix that generally looks nice as well i need to finish it off if i'm honest but um it does it does look nice and it's really nice and underfoot that pretty much wraps up this boat tour so yeah thanks for watching this video um we really hope you enjoyed it i love watching these type of videos myself i've watched so many before i was buying this boat um so yeah i hope it was useful uh, if you've got any questions or there's anything else you want to know about the boat or just any questions in general um drop them in the comments we will pretty much get back to every single comment because we're really excited to speak to everybody uh is there anything else to add um if you enjoy the content please think about subscribing we really want to make an effort and um share everything with you guys and our family and friends yes so thanks for watching and we'll speak to you soon hopefully